Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with your co-host, the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice, and his wife, Jeannie. Michael and Jeannie share with you the wisdom of the ancient Aramaic internal process of forgiveness. They offer tools and support five days a week. They will support you in building a solid foundation within yourself to live in pure love. In Aramaic, Rachma. Michael is the author of Why Is This Happening to Me Again? For more information on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.whyagain.com. And now your co-host, The Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael and Jeannie Rice. To the brightness within you and the truth that Hi, and welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice. Our call-in number is 646-200-4169. Press 1, and that puts you into queue to talk to Michael. We'll be glad to uh, hear from you, to answer your questions, comments. Welcome, guests. Today is Memorial Day Celebration 348. And we welcome you to the show. Hello, Michael. Hi, sweetie. We're wrapping up another week week here in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, another week of radio shows, the awesome opportunity to join with you, share with you, and support you. As we appreciate your support in learning and understanding the healing process that true forgiveness from the ancient Aramaic brings to us. And when we talk about honoring Memorial Day, Veterans Day, we have a project that we invite everybody who participates in our show to engage in, and that project is one of putting an end to the cause of war and creating a world where humans function like humans. What we call human forms actually have human life in them and function as humans. Now, That can seem a little confusing at first, so we define for you a human life. Hold a newborn child. You know exactly what a human life is. Don't have to know any more than that. Just hold a newborn, and you've got the direct experience of a human life. If you're not living out of that, if you're not experiencing that 24-7, 365, then what you need are some tools for changing that process in your life and getting to the point where you truly claim and live out of your humanness for the rest of eternity. And that's what we're here to support you in doing, living a human life, living as the awesome active presence of love. Now, that can be a challenge at first because our culture teaches us to give up our human lives, to live in the so-called real world, and to buy into all kinds of hostilities and fears. Well, we're here to invite you to change that in your life. And the tool called forgiveness in Aramaic has nothing to do with letting others off the hook because of what's happening inside of you. The tool of forgiveness is the tool with which you undo from inside of you everything unlike your human life. Undo hostility, undo fear, grief, pain, drama, trauma, sadness, hatred, vengeance. Now, perhaps it's difficult to imagine a life without those energies because, of course, all those terrible people out there that do all those things to you are the cause of that, right? Eh, No, not so. If those things are going on inside of you, there's a reason. And the reason is because they're inside of you. And life comes along and brings them up. Sadly, the tool for removing those things was pretty much disappeared from the planet about 2,000 years ago. It was turned around, and it was turned into a tool where you let other people off the hook because those things are in you. They really hurt me. Okay, just forgive them. It's all their fault. Well, you'll notice a particular quality of hurt you've had 87 different times with 42 different people. You're the only one that was there every time. That hurts about you. It's not about them. 
nothing to do with them. Forgiveness is how you remove that hurt. And so that's what we're here to support you in doing. That's what we're here to understand with you and share with you. If you're not sure how that process works, we invite you to jump on our website, www.whyagain.com, whyagain.com. And on the right-hand side, there's a link that says Download Worksheets. The first seven links under that section will give you at least four sets of custom instructions for going through the worksheets, live radio shows where we walk somebody through worksheets so you can listen and get the specific directions. No excuses for saying, I don't understand, I can't do it. However, if as you're doing it, as you practice with it, you run into some challenges, questions, refinements, we are delighted to be here five days a week, one hour a day, five days a week to support you in understanding that process and all the corollary tools that we've developed. So our calling number is 646-200-4169. We're delighted that you're here. And uh, Jeannie, do we have Dr. Tim? Is David with us today? Hello, Jeannie. Have you got your mute button on, sweetie? Neither one of them are on the show yet. I can't hear you, Jeannie. Neither one of them are on the show. You still can't hear me? Go ahead. Still can't hear me? Oh, there you go. I've got you now. Neither one of them are on. Oh, okay. Well, do we have any callers? Anything happening in the chat room? No, everything's quiet on the home front. Everything is quiet. Well, let's talk a little bit about what uh, what is happening. We're uh, doing our last workshop tonight, Codependence to Interdependence, in um, Jacksonville, Florida, our last free open workshop. Tomorrow we'll be doing a Mind Shifters and Still Point breathing session. If anybody's in the area that wants to join us, we'd be delighted if you come share with us. Of course, the, the Mind Shifters and Still Point Breathing being an all-day workshop, there is a fee attached to that one. And uh, if you'd like to join us, you could uh, let us know by showing up at the workshop tonight and uh, joining us for Codependence to Interdependence. We're talking with some folks about perhaps being up in Wilmington, uh, maybe uh, oh, where else up in there, that area in North Carolina, perhaps Asheville, perhaps perhaps Winston-Salem. So uh, we'll be keeping you posted on that. Watch the Internet, uh, our website, uh, under Travel Workshops to see if anything develops in those areas. And uh, if you'd like us to be coming into those areas, contact the folks at Unity and let them know you want us to come and play. And uh, we may be doing that within the next few weeks. We are having some conversations in that direction. And then we head to uh, Heartland. And on the... 12th of July, we'll begin a 10-day Food Fund Forgiveness and Work Project. And that uh, 10-day Food Fund Forgiveness and Work Project will be an economy program at Heartland. Ari, Chef Ari, is, uh, has volunteered to come and uh, bring some awesome new recipes. This time we're going to be doing some cooked and some raw recipes. And so the walking encyclopedia of, uh, of food knowledge, Ari Budnick, will be joining us for that 10 days, and uh, then he'll be with us through the uh, opening of the intensive season. So we'll be doing that 10-day program, and the 10 days for food, accommodations, workshop, workshop materials, and everything. We'll be doing food programs. We'll be doing workshops in the evenings. We'll be doing at least two mind shifters and still point breathing sessions, and uh, then work projects to get the property ready for the intensives. And so that will start on the 12th and go through the 21st. And then on the 23rd, we'll start a nine-day Why Is This Happening to Me Again intensive. If you want to check out the, uh, the workshops that are included in that, there's a whole series of, I don't know, nine or ten different workshops that we do. And then we'll be moving into teacher training. So there will be a 17-day teacher training. Uh, the two, there's, well, let me clarify that. There's a nine-day Why Is This Happening to Me Again and then a nine-day teacher training. If you combine those two, the nine and nine, because they overlap, become an 18-day teacher's training. So if you're interested in joining us for either or both of those, we'd love to see you. If you're interested in reviewing, if you look on the website, there's some special pricing for reviewers. And uh, we've also got some discounts for somebody who wants to come and do the whole, I believe it's 28 days. So uh, you can come and be with us from the 12th of July through the end of teacher training. 
and there's a special price on the flyer on the website. So if anybody wants to join us, we'd be delighted to see you. And uh, our call-in number, 646-200-4169. Questions. How are your worksheets going? Anything to share about what's happening with your worksheets? And or anything that uh, you have in the way of a question regarding the worksheets or the communication tools or the codependence tools or the stress tools, you know, all the way along the line. We're here to support you and help you to refine your understanding of each of those tools. If you and I were sitting face-to-face right now, what would your question be? If you're on the phone, push one. That will put you in queue. Jenny will know you have a question, and we'll get into that question. And if you're in the chat room, of course, you can type your question in, or you can call in either way, but you can type your question in. Jeannie will be able to share it with you. If you're listening to the show but you're not in the chat room, if you go to Blog Talk Radio and you uh, create an account, so it's a free, simple creating an account, then you go into the chat room and you can ask questions. So, Jeannie, go ahead. Yes, we have a caller, and I think it might be Nene, area code 954. You're on the air. Yes, this is me. Hello, my heart family. Hey there, young lady. How are you? Oh, great. I'm I'm really very good. Thanks. And I just want Wonderful. to say, last night we had the Latin support group. It's uh, we meet weekly every Thursday in Coral Springs. We had three new people. They uh, attended your lectures in uh, Boca Raton, but they were they were outside the country. They were traveling. Now they came back. And they contacted Maritza and Hugo Torres, so they came to the group, and it was awesome. I did the Why Is This Happening to Me Again, Por Qué Otra Vez, in Spanish. It was Uh great, very, very wonderful. But this time we chose a topic that I said, okay, everybody, let's choose a topic that we all are now want to, you know, to clean or something. So we, everybody's. Uh Yeah, everybody said, okay, finances. So we did that, the forgiveness, and it was great. Really, really. Tell us what happened. What were the biggest breakthroughs in it? Uh, They they realized that they were dealing with their own fears, uh, their own belief system that come from, you know, if, if you have enough money, then you don't suffer, and if you don't suffer, you're not a... You know, you are not according to the church or according to God. You know, he's going to punish you because you're greedy. So that was basically mm. what most people came out with was their shame or their own, yeah, shame because they learned that it was greedy and it was a sin, you know, sinful to be enjoying in a f- economic freedom. So that, that was really very nice. Isn't that interesting that uh, a church who teaches the teach supposedly teaches the teachings of a man who says, "I come to bring you life and bring it more abundantly, and it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom." Isn't it interesting that it's become sinful to have economic freedom and abundance? Yeah, <laughs> you know it's like so crazy. It's so crazy what's been put in Yeshua's mouth. In in virtually every circle, in virtually every so-called religion on the planet, that's the kind of twist that's happened. It's been turned backward and inside out. And, of course, every one of the religions that's doing exactly that thing points at the others and says, oh, look at the silly things they're doing. Look at the dumb things they're doing in Yeshua's name. Look how wrong they are. And they're in total blockage of truth about their own insanity. They teach fear in the name of love. And, I mean, the whole game is just so ludicrous. But, you know, it's kind of like the fish in water, I suspect the fish can't see the water because that's its environment. And if you're brought up in an environment where God terrorizes you and God's going to kill you and God's going to get you and, and God's mm-hmm. and on and on and on it goes, then that becomes logical and sensible. And it's just time for us to give it up and accept the truth that the Creator is love. Period. That's it. Nothing else happens from the Creator but that. The rest of it's all the foolishness of men projected into uh, into theology and churches teach it as dogma and doctrine. It's just it's bizarre. 
And that one, of course, is one of the most bizarre to uh, to teach that, to have liberty in the name of one who said, I come to teach you the truth and set you free. It's, it's, just, it's just so weird. Yes. Yes. So that was interesting. And then also I, I noticed they are downloading the book and they put it together, the uh-huh. book in Spanish. There's so two people right. have the book. Awesome. That was very nice also. Um, Fabulous. Some other ladies are, they, they, the other ladies notice, oh, Maria Cristina, but you look so good, so much alive. And it's true because I'm, you know, she has been working a lot and every week we meet. So the people that haven't seen her for a while, they noticing how she's it expressing more aliveness in joy in, in her being. Awesome. Well, that's fabulous. Yes. Very well. I, I did hear from Unity and Pompano this morning. Great. And, and uh, so we are set up for Tuesday night, and I'm thinking we'll plan to meet around 6:30 on Tuesday at Unity and Pompano, and we'll just gather everybody up and down the coast that wants to join us in terms of uh, creating uh, support groups down there and supporting the support groups that are happening. So, so if you want to put that out to folks, and I'll be sending yep. out an email later today about that. Great. Great. And cool. then um, this I want to share, and perhaps, you know, I would need your support in this um, because it's been big for me, and the vitality of the group last night, I think, helped me to go to my next layer um, about uh, guilt in terms uh-huh. of um, of being a mother and being a woman. So I did my worksheet previously about my relationship with Gustavo, and that has brought up for me some guilt in trying right. to have a harmonious relationship with Lucia and with Gustavo at the same time. I, and I noticed it was my guilt um, when um, I came to this country and I took Lucy with me and I separated her from her father and from the family. And in that moment, I was just, of course, I was in my carbon-based memory of desperation and frustration and anger, etc. I now see it that way. But in that moment, I guess there was a lot of guilt, you know, blocking right. me. And now with this relationship with Gustavo, it has brought up that that energy. So um, because of vitality of the group, I think this morning when Gustavo called me and I was talking to him, I started feeling, you know, sadness and my guilt, and I was able to tell him, listen, my relationship with you, I'm doing my worksheets, but what is bringing up right now is my guilt, and I ask for your support to deal with my own internal fears and guilt. So that was very nice. Uh, So I went ahead and I did my other worksheet on that. And, well, I I feel a lot better now. And then I said, well, in reality, I think the new new energy that is now in my life and Gustavo and and Lucia are adding value to each other's lives. So that's what I, my new goal um, that came out of doing that. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Well, I support you in uh, in being able to process that. And another piece of the puzzle, good breath, <laughs> another piece of the puzzle might be, you know, remember a few weeks ago you had a layer come up around your grandfather leaving his family behind and going to another country and your yeah. uh, your father and, and then you leaving your family behind. And so there may be another layer of that part that's coming up in this process as you're reaching this new level of vitality and able to handle a new uh, uh, piece of the puzzle yeah. in your relationships with uh, with family. Yes, absolutely. So that was my sharing for today. And tonight in Boca Raton, we're going to have responsibility communication at, at Gustavo's house, and it's at 7.30. Fabulous. And uh, there's a link, or there's a, the address is on the flyer. Do you want to give your phone number out just so somebody wants to contact you? Yes, it's 
1-800-926-9539. Fabulous. All right. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you on Tuesday at Unity around 6.30. Great, Unity. Okay, see you all there. Hugs. Happy weekend. Okay, blessings to you too. Bye-bye. Awesome. Fabulous to watch what people are doing and how they're moving forward in their uh, in their own personal healing and extending it to others, supporting others and doing the same. So it is really very powerful. Jeannie, do we have any other callers? Anything happening in the chat room? No, no, nobody has their hand up. Uh, if you're on the switchboard and you want to talk, press 1. That puts you in queue to talk to Michael. David and Tim, neither one are with us yet. And no questions in the chat room. Okay. Well, if uh, if you were sitting face-to-face me, with me, you who are either in the chat room or listening on the phone, if you're uh, not able to type into the chat room because you're not registered for it, uh, we invite you to register or pick up the phone and call 646-200-4169. And if you're on the phone and you have a question about any of the tools, anything that we're teaching, we would be delighted to support you and have you participate in asking the questions that you have that will give you deeper and deeper levels of insight into your own process and your ability to share the work with others. So that's what we're here to support you in. And as you do your work, you know, there's this uh, process that was taught called critical mass or that's taught in physics where when we reach a certain level of energy, there is a breakthrough point. And so we're looking to support that breakthrough point by getting enough people who are willing to do their work that we will together create a a new level of capacity to process through what never be, be, never belonged within our structures and to open up the faculties that stress shuts down in us the human faculties Things like sensitivity, caring, aliveness, joy, creativity, intuition, immunity. Those things that are natural to human life but are shut down because of the stresses and strains of the hostilities and fears of the world. We're here to support you in understanding and putting those tools to work so that all of those higher faculties open you, and they're yours at every instant, at every turn in your life. And that's what we're here to uh, be part of, is to share that with you and to empower in you the presence of those higher human faculties. So, Jeannie, do you have any thoughts to share with us today? Anything on your mind? I was just thinking about um, wishing everybody a happy Mother's Day this coming Sunday. And uh, I was just bringing it, trying to bring up on the Internet when Mother's Day started. And I haven't oh, you know, it might be cool. Uh, you remember we had talked about this a few weeks ago, I think, um, that there's a, uh, a little story on the we- on our website about Mother's Day. Perhaps uh, perhaps you could pull that up on the uh, computer and share it with our audience. And uh, it's it, it really is uh, the acknowledgement that mothers should be treated with. You know, we're we're uh, in a culture that because the king wants everybody to be generating money for him or her, you know, whether it's King Obama or King George or whoever it is, uh, women who actually take care of their families, one of the most honorable professions in the world, are kind of dissed and made second-class citizens and looked down on or at least made to feel like they're something lower than somebody who's out there earning money, like money's money's got something to do with human life, like money is even real, you know, like where, where, where does the whole concept of money even come from? 
in our natural state, money was never a, an object. It's it's a whole scam that we've been conned into, and uh, you know we participate in it, and and it, and it it's made to appear that our value has something to do with money, which is so bizarre. And instead, there's a little story that we ran across, and I don't even know who wrote it, but it's very powerful in acknowledging and. Uh, seeing what the real role of a mother is. So do you have that story, sweetie? I do. And Did you share it? List, under, on our website, you'll find it. There's a section that says stories, quotes, and links. And it's under there, and it's called Just the Mom. So it says, I stood in line as a woman named Emily was renewing her driver's license at the county clerk's office. And she was asked what her occupation was. She hesitated, uncertain how to classify herself. What I mean is, explained the recorder, do you have a job or you just say, of course I have a job, snapped Emily, appearing a little embarrassed. I'm a mom. We don't list mom as an occupation, but a housewife covers it, said the recorder emphatically. It sounded demeaning. I forgot all about Emily until one day I found myself in the same situation, this time at our own town hall. The clerk was obviously a career woman, poised, efficient, and possessed of a high-sounding title like official interrogator or town registrar. What is your occupation, she probed. What made me say it, I do not know. The word simply popped out. I am self-employed as a research associate in the field of child development and human relations and executive assistant to the CEO of my company. The clerk paused. Ball point and frozen in midair. And she looked up as though she had not heard correctly. I repeated the title of my chosen field slowly, emphasizing the most significant words. Then I stared with wonder as my pronouncement was written by a hand that was proud to make my acquaintance. Written into the public record for all the world to see, it was in bold black ink on the official questionnaire. Might I ask, she said with new interest, just what do you do in your field? Coolly and with a new sense of pride at the realization of just how important my purpose in the world really is, I heard myself reply. I have a continuing program of research, in parenthesis, what mother doesn't, in the laboratory and in the field. Normally, I would have said indoors and out. I'm working for my master's, in parenthesis, the whole blessed family, and already have four credits, parenthesis, all of them are daughters. And I handle all aspects of our company's business. My work is acknowledged as one of the most demanding in the humanities, in parenthesis, any mother care to disagree. And I often work 14 hours a day, parenthesis, 24 is more like it. The lives that I touch alter the course of history, and my chosen career is more challenging than most run-of-the-mill jobs. The rewards are out of this world, much more than just money, prestige, power, or success. There was an increasing note of respect in the clerk's voice as she completed the form, stood up, and personally ushered me to the door. As I drove into our driveway, buoyed up by my important, how important my position is, I was greeted by my lab assistant, ages 13, 7, and 3. Upstairs, I could hear our experimental model in the child development program, which is our new baby, testing out a new vocal pattern. I had scored a beat on the bureaucracy, and the cloud our culture has put on motherhood was erased forever. I had gone on the official records as someone more distinguished and indispensable to mankind than just another mom. Motherhood, what a glorious calling, even when there is no title on the door. Now, grandmothers and grandfathers recognize your importance as senior research associate in the field of child development and human relations. Great grandmothers and grandfathers accept with dignity your role as executive senior associate. Aunts and uncles take your places as associate research assistants. And dads, thanks for your part, your love and support for the most important human grouping in the world, our family. May your troubles be less your blessings more, and nothing but happiness come through your door. And may this be the best year of your eternal life. Yay, moms. (laughs) 
So happy Mother's Day to every mom out there. And even those who haven't birthed their own children, thank you for being there because you don't know what neighbor you impact or what child down the street or at your church or in the grocery store just by being an example of the mom. Yeah, and it's so bizarre. Our culture demeans that position, and uh, so many mothers vacate their role prematurely. Uh, the, The sales pitch, you know, it's interesting. In third world countries, doctors are given samples by these companies that produce toxic formulas for babies. They're given enough samples to give away to new moms so that if the mother uses it, her milk will dry up and she will not be able to feed her own baby. And the cost of the formula is more than what these women earn in a week. And they get hooked on these things because they, the, uh, the marketing departments uh, wipe out motherhood. And along with it, immunity and a lifelong base of health because they've promoted these artificial, chemically-filled, sugar-filled drug bags that are called formula and, you know, use it as part of a way to get mothers out of their homes and uh, and to pretend that the, the role of the mother and the role of the breast is something that's to be demeaned and how bizarre it is. So... Thank you to all moms for the awesome, awesome role that you play in each of our lives. And for those who have been forced to give up their motherhood role because of economic reasons, we hold the space of love and blessings and perhaps the ability to shift the world around enough so that mom becomes a fully respected position in the world, profession. It is one of the most intricate and most demanding professions that there is. We sure appreciate you. And I, for one, so appreciate my mom and the contributions that she has made to my life. In fact, in about a month and a half, we're going to get up and get to spend some time with her. She's 94 at this point. She was 70 when she had me. And, uh, and uh, Jeannie, I, I acknowledge you as a mom, that uh, your awesome son is a, definitely a, a product of the, uh, the quality of being that you are and the contributions that you've made to his life. And in a, a difficult posture as a single mom raising a son in a pretty crazy world, you've done a pretty awesome job. So you are to be acknowledged. I am blessed. Yes. And to CJ, who is the mom of Krista and Michael J., my children, I acknowledge you and honor you in your role of bringing those children into the world and raising them to be the, uh, the people that they are today. And uh, we're, we're blessed by their presence, your presence. And here we are in Jacksonville, Florida, getting ready to complete our, uh, our last workshop this evening, our last free workshop, Codependence to Interdependence at Unity of Jackville. Jacksonville. Come and join us. And uh, anything, any questions happening in the chat room, Jeannie, or anybody uh, calling in that uh, has a question or a comment for us? No, not yet. I could read Andy's letter. He's, Andy has been such an awesome support this week, and he, every day he has sent out a letter to his mailing list. And so he sent one out for today, and it says, Dr. Rice advises us to wear two pair of socks tonight as what we're going to hear is going to blow our socks off. Smiley face. Based on the power of his teachings over the past week, I believe this will be a powerful piece of knowledge, and I'm looking forward to finding out. I envision tonight's message is going to introduce a critical block in what we imagine is standing in the way of our direct connection to love, God, brothers, A hint given indicates that one of the things we're going to learn about is the power people. These are primary caregivers when we were young. We developed a mechanism to please and protect us from 
these people and how to act when we felt severely threatened. A mechanism created by the age of five that we still use long after the apparent need is over. What else did we learn as children later in life? For most of us, it will be things based in hostility and fear. How do we identify the barriers to our consciously natural love state? How can we remove these blocks? Michael has a wonderful and easy to understand teaching based on A Course in Miracles and the Aramaic Principles with answers to these questions. I hope to see you there. Thank you, Andy. Yes, thank you, thank you. Grazie, grazie. And we do have a hand up. Well, let's hear from our caller. Area code 941, you're on the air. Well, hello there. This is Marie in Sarasota. Well, hi, hi. Are you, young lady. We haven't heard your sweet voice in a while. Yes, I know. I have time to speak to you now, and I was listening to the show. And um, although maybe not necessarily anything like special or groundbreaking to report, I can say that I'm like really happy, really fulfilled, and um, I listened to what uh, Jeannie was saying about somebody that sent her an email or a correspondence, uh, and and what it triggered for me is that um, is that I've been in uh, business for myself since 1987, so which is like just short of 25 years. And uh, the um, what I have been carrying with me is that um, it was not okay to be in business for myself because I remember my power person used to tell me. Um, that if I was in business for myself, basically I paid for a job, <laughs> paid to be paid to be employed as opposed to be employed by somebody else who would like honor my um, uh, 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 my characteristics and, and uh, my experience and so on. It just tapped into this next piece of work that I have to go through. But besides mm. that. <laughs> Besides that, everything is going really well, and I'm, I'm, I, I met with Nene last week, and I met with David also last week. We had good communication, and uh, I just tap into the universe and remove the goals that I have for anything and everything, including myself, and just let the magic happen, and it does. wanted to convey that to you. Awesome. And uh, Marie Jose uh, does a Jose. support group every Jose, pardon me. Yes. It would be pronounced the, jo, the J in French, but it's not pronounced in Spanish. I'm getting the two mixed correct. Mixed I'm up. French, not Spanish. Okay. It's okay. I, I, got it. I got it. I'm, I'm getting the brain cells for that. <laughs> so uh, so the, uh, the support group that you do on, on Monday nights is at Unity uh, Center in um, Sarasota. And then Tuesday night in St. Pete, correct? Correct. Now, I got like, um, I met um, this morning with the new adult um, education director at Unity of Sarasota. She called me and uh-huh. she said that she wants to do a, um, how is it called, like a pilot program of three months where people will commit for three months every Monday night, pay in advance, and uh, just go with my class because she heard so many good things about it, Uh, uh, good feedback, if I may say, and a lot of healing. And she looked at all the... Uh, the other like uh, classes that were offered, and then there were two classes that resonated with her, and one mine is is one of them. So it, it just went really nicely. I don't know how I'm going to go about that, but I said yes, I'm willing to uh, put yeah. in. I'm willing to put a program, a pilot program of uh, probably not advanced studies, but more intensive studies for a period of three months. Well, that's awesome. And the church is willing to do all the marketing about it and so on and so forth. So it's great news to me. I was really ecstatic. Well, that's fabulous. Very cool. Well, we're delighted in any support we can be along the way uh, in any way, shape, or form. You know we're here to do that. And uh, 
Uh, of course, uh, on our website is the information. If you uh, are in the Sarasota area, every Monday night you can go and get to play with Marie Jose and uh, learn on deeper and deeper levels what the process of forgiveness means. Are there any, um, you know, over the last few weeks, any particular breakthroughs that you've seen in the, uh, the support group that might inspire others in their work, in their process? Okay, well, this is my observation. I have noticed that people that come to my class or the people that I do attract to my class um, are twofold. Either some people that are like, okay, th- your favorite say is I have $5 in five minutes, tell me everything you know. <laughs> and, of course, right. when, they, <laughs> when they hear that they have to be involved in their own life, they disappear and never come back. That's one part yeah. of the people that I create for myself, I guess. I guess. I've seen the other that part one too, is I, like I, they're like the other part is, is other people that are dedicated and say, "Listen, it's not a feely or a doctor feel good uh, process, but we're willing, ready, and able to go through it." And these people I work through with. And the, the the result is just awesome. Every week they just hug me at the end of the session because I do two hours and, and often a time it goes um, uh, past that, like two hours and a half. And it just hugged right. me. And you help me so much. I do not believe I help them. I just say, like, they help me. And by helping myself, I just clear the way for them and open the space for them to heal. That's my job. That's what I do. That's what I'm committed to do. That's what I do on a regular basis. Uh, but it's cool. an awesome process. And for any listeners on the show who don't have support groups in their own communities, what would your input be for them? What would you suggest that they do about that? Oh, just start. Okay, I'll go with my own experience. When I first started to do the uh, support group, Um, I was not as probably knowledgeable as I am today, and I still have a long way to go. However, I uh, personally combated my fear. Every work group, I was like, oh, I'm not up to par. I don't know much. And uh, I just worked through my fear and uh, until it became like... I cannot say it's natural yet still, but it's more natural than it used to be. I'm more confident. And in the end, there's so many people that need healing and have no idea. And I love to do one-on-one. It's not really one-on-one. It's a group, obviously. However, you know, it's like a healing vortex. You know, we heal them. They heal us. They heal me. And every time I come back from... This work group, although I have a day job, as you know, um, and it's right. additional to my day job, I come back and I'm like so re-energized and like, yes, this is the right place. You know, I accomplished something. We're moving forward. And I removed the goal of, of, of helping everybody because I know I will, will not. I have no idea. It's not my job. But my job is to be there as a soldier and um, whoever shows up is the person that needs healing, and I work with them, through them, through me, within me, give all my might, and that's how, that's the premise I stand from. Mm, very cool. Well, that's awesome. I'm so delighted uh, that you're on the team, and uh, you know, I'm I'm seeing how we're going to have more and more support group leaders that we perhaps need to create some kind of a conference for uh, support group yes, leaders to come. And through. I know that Lean that um, is going to start holding the work group in um, North Tampa as of January, as of, uh, sorry, June 1st, asked right. me to attend and help her, and I'm happy to do so. You know, well, at least. who was that? Who uh, was Pauline. That oh, Pauline good. Awesome. In, yeah. um, uh, North Tampa. Right, Pauline and Eric. Fabulous. And, you know, there is also a, uh, a group that's meeting at, um, at Harmony uh, Church in Tampa. So we need to, we need to get uh, the folks that are doing that group uh, to, uh, 
to call into the show and share some of the uh, the things that are happening with the show. That would be pretty uh, Absolutely, pretty awesome. because, you know, um, I would be delighted to show up to their class once in a while, you know, basically just to add some more energy to their class and and show support right. that that would be my job. Cool. Whatever well, I, I will uh, I will get you uh, the contact information uh, for the two folks that are running that group, uh, and uh, and maybe you can just connect in with them and uh, see if there's a time when it's appropriate to about maybe um, you know at a time when you're you're working with Pauline or what have you. But that's that's fabulous. We appreciate you supporting those folks and and getting that moving. That's it's going to be. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Uh, looks like there might be a support group starting here. Five, six, seven. That's at least eight or nine support groups in uh, in Florida now. So that's really awesome. This is awesome. Uh, which, yeah. What I is, would say is, to people that are listening to your show is that the support group is, and that's what Dr. Tim, Tim keeps saying, is so helpful for the person that facilitates it. It really is. It's it's a. Uh, it's a way to for me to stretch myself. It's a way to keep on track. It's a way for me to keep doing my my forgiveness work. It's otherwise it will phase it will phase out and you know will go as a plan B, C, D, E, whatever. So that's that's the gift that I receive every week. Cool. But it's challenging. So, Not easy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you not you like it's the, an easy uh, breeze walk in the park, not for me. Right, right. And but and to, you know, willing to go through look, the process. Right, and when you look at the fact that you started the support, support group and you ran it for almost a year uh, before yep. you came and did any training at Heartland, and yes. it was awesome and powerful, and uh, and then you went to the next level, and somebody doesn't need to be trained in this work to facilitate a support group. The DVDs uh, create a space, and as you play and work with people with the DVDs and the worksheets and you do them yourself, you you learn how to uh, to create support. And then, uh, of course, you came into teacher training, took things to another level, and uh, that's just kind of how to create that sort of um, gathering. And, you know, that African proverb that everybody's heard me use so often, if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together, that... Uh, you just really have to create a community around you to uh, to get to that level of support that's really possible for us. It's, and uh, may really I add one nice fi- final touch? This please. is what I have uh, experienced so far. I don't need to learn anything more than I do already know. I just need to debunk and remove whatever doesn't belong in my system, and I already have all the answer- answers. There you go. You got it. <laughs> Well, big Emerson hugs to you. <laughs> Emerson Emerson said we had to get our bloated nothingness out of the way. And yes, he was right yes, on. yes. Once my bloated no- nothingness <laughs> is out of the way, then I just like miracle happen. Miracles exactly. happen. And so Magic. It is with all of us. Awesome. So it is with all of us, and uh, you know that resident in us, there's a power that can tell us everything we need to know about everything. But Absolutely, as not. opposed to I need to learn more, intellectualize more, rationalize more. It just never ends because you'll never know enough to compensate exactly. for what we already know, what I already know. Exactly. Well, blessings to you. That was my little two cents of the day, and I wanted to convey well, that to you, and I'm happy that to be part of your team. Maria, before yes? you go. Yes, um, just for some of the others that have just started groups, um, I've heard a little bit of, uh, I guess, discouragement when yes. they don't have big big crowds. Can yes. you add to that? Because I know you went through that as well. And I did. You I, I went encouragement? like a, uh, encouragement. Well, it's uh, it takes a little while to form, and I know that I was at three sessions um that nobody showed up and then all of a sudden two pop up and then more and more and more and it's been like that ever since so sometimes you have sometimes we are tempted to stop 300 feet from the gold <laughs> right just good point and 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 just move through the fear 
and stay there still and say, okay, what do I want to create for myself today? And just let go of the goal and let's see how it manifests. It does. It always does. To me, it has always happened. Awesome. So well, that, that's that great would input. Be input. Fabulous input. We appreciate you. We appreciate you being on our team and, and love being on yours and any support we can be. And we wish you an awesome, happy Mother's Day. Thank you so much. Same to you, Jeannie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, bye-bye now. All right, thanks for the call. Bye-bye. So 646-200-4169 is our call-in number. Press 1, and that puts you in queue to talk to Michael. We're down to about nine minutes. Gone by pretty fast. Anybody out there have a question or a comment on this Friday? There's nothing going on in the chat room, and nobody has their hand up. Okay. Well, if oh, we uh, a hand just went up. Oh, okay. I four one. You're on the air. Well, hello. I couldn't let you know ten minutes go by with no nobody calling in. <laughs> I called Julie. Oh man, I've been feeling so much better since the other day from from the support that you all gave me. Oh, and I know it was more than just Michael and I. And I heard Dr. Tim the next day comment on it. And I appreciated that. Um, I just appreciate Nene what she's going through and how she's just breaking through constantly and it does happen the breakthroughs happen so I don't know what to say about mine except that I have great relief and I think the crux of it was recognizing uh, from you Michael pointing out about goals and in fact the next day you actually addressed some things with another caller about her sister who had died and she wanted to right. still be with her didn't want her to be gone and you talked about goals, and I and I really got that, that I just had goals attached to repairing my parents' relationship, you know, and then failing at it and all that. So um, you really, really and helped. Of course, I so appreciate it. Yeah, and, of course, you didn't fail at it. It wasn't your job. It wasn't possible for you to do. So you might – that might be another area to move in the direction of is worksheets on I'm a failure because – and, right. and, you know, I, over the years, in all the years I've been working with people, I've never run into somebody from a divorced home that didn't think the divorce was their fault. And, yeah. of course, attached to it being their fault is I was a failure, it's hopeless, it help, it's helpless. And so as you touch into that, those four different dynamics are all deep worksheet processes to do because – it, one, it wasn't your job. Two, you couldn't have done it. Three, it was between your your father and your mother. It wasn't to do with you. But when you make up, which most every child does when they can't fix it, that they failed, then that reality, until it's forgiven, will tend to pop up in many, many different places in life. And when you go back to that root experience and you delete it when you forgive it remove that experience and for those who perhaps are new to the show and new to the forgiveness process forgiveness doesn't have anything to do with letting yourself off the hook if you think you're a failure or your parents off the hook because they should have it has to do with removing those realities in this case failure that you build out of an experience and so uh, I would suggest that, you know, maybe some worksheets in that direction might be uh, useful and helpful and uh, alleviate you of another level of the burden that humans were not designed to carry. Well, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because this is another thing that I noticed. Um, the physical symptoms of healing, right? I was having for three days. Uh, a headache from all this stress about my partner having cancer, maybe going to die, what can I do, you know? And um, and as I started to experience this from the perspective of having uh, the original um, experience of, of being a failure and helpless and grieving and all of that, um, 
as a child with the parents' divorce, I started, I mean, these feelings were intense. This headache was intense, and I'm not a headache-getting person. I was throbbing, and I thought, oh, no, I have a tumor, you know, stupid. But, you know, I thought, what was this like as a child? Was it this intense? And it probably was. But I was thinking my body, my body was younger then, and so... I didn't have headaches, but I did have intense stomach uh, tension. And right. um, and nothing really embedded itself in me as an illness, really. But over the years now, having buried it and kept it buried and, and gone through different levels of pain, but not quite all the way to the original pain, you know, I, that, I can see that that's how illness and disease gets layered into us and replicated and hidden like we how do we even know what it is if we you know if we don't know how to look precisely so, i don't there's a really big discharge for me and i appreciate that cool well a lot of times also headaches have to do with self invalidation i failed wow. there's something wrong with me i should have been able to that a lot of times relates directly to headaches Oh, hmm. yeah, I was feeling all that stress and, of course, not knowing what to do again. <laughs> Here I am. I don't know what to do. And I do recognize now that it's not my responsibility for another person and what they're going through, But I ha- and, I, and I can have compassion. But I had to remove the gold. It's so true. And when you gave me that clue, yeah. you reminded me of it again. It just worked in an instant yeah. even. <laughs> Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. And and you know something? Mm-hmm. It's not our job to do. One of the one of the dynamics of the power person is that we shift out of human beingness and we become human doings. And our whole value of ourselves is based in doing. It's kind of like we started the show out with that story about mothers, and that if the mother isn't doing the career, the you know the success, the money-making job, then she isn't uh, a full person. And the truth is that most mothers living and being are far more person than the career person who's out there doing, 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 doing to show how powerful and how successful and how new they are, and they give up their whole human lives for it. And so the the most powerful thing that you can offer to Ed is your being and your presence as a human being. Mm-hmm. And what you'll find is that as you function in conversation with him, totally and completely out of your human beingness, If there's something for you to do, you will know precisely what to do. You will be guided exactly the words to say, exactly the thing to reach for. If there's some kind of solution that you can facilitate bringing forward that will support him in some way, you will be guided by the power that runs the universe as to exactly what to do. But you'll be functioning as a being doing something rather than as a human doing, or I should say a non-human doing. Well, that's a big difference. Thank you. Night and day. Night and day. And I well, am we appreciate you. Just quickly, we're down. Hmm? Say okay, again? I just said well, I am beginning to trust that. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, fabulous. Well, we're, we're down to just a few seconds, but I was wondering, we haven't heard from Julia lately, and I was just wondering how she's doing. Um, I've seen her periodically, and she's really still in the hostility and and the blame. Um, I just can't break through for her, and yeah. she's also losing, you know, the memory kind of thing. So she's pretty, you know, I don't really know what to do, but be, I guess, be with her. Be. There you go. Same solution. <laughs> only one solution, only one problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're down to where we're going to have to close the show out. We appreciate you. We hold the space. If you happen to see Julia, say hello to us for us, and we, we hold you in a blessing. Take care. All right. Everybody, uh, bring a stranger on Monday. Have the best year yet of your eternal life. Take care. Moms, happy Mother's Day.
Thank you for listening to Mind Shifters Radio with the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice and his wife Jeannie, who present the internal Aramaic process of forgiveness. Michael and Jeannie are here every Monday through Friday on Earth Angels Radio. For more on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.whyagain.com. That's www.whyagain.com.